Michael Nagy here with Jiggy Jag TV and DiscoveringBands.com, and I'm here with the band Megatronics. How you guys doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Awesome. Now, you want to tell us a little about the band for anyone who doesn't know? Uh, the band started from an idea of I wrote music and I'm not a good singer, so I asked uh, Power Rob to sing, and then we were like, if it does good, then we should make a whole band out of it, and apparently it did well because here we are. Yeah, uh, so Dark Rob and I, uh, we've had a, a pretty long history just kind of, I guess, circling around each other as musicians. And um, we, we've done a bunch of events called the 98 Rock All-Star Jams. Uh, these charity events where bands from the area would get together and do uh, kind of super group performances of, uh, uh, of like famous tunes for the right causes and whatnot. And um, we did a bunch of fun tunes together. I forgot the first one. I know we did Love Gun. Uh, the first one, I think. Uh, the first one I think was Living Color. Really, that was a while back. Ancient history, yeah. But yeah, we've we've done a lot together. Uh, and then uh, uh, my other band, Thrill Killer, started doing a music film series, a very '80s themed, and we had this guy come in to be the lead villain, uh, Snide. I'm a bad guy. And uh, around that time, he sent me uh, the instrumentals for what became I Fight Time, and people liked it a lot. We ended up winning the Recall FM Battle of the Producers. Was it 2018? We pulled that off. Something. Yeah. Yeah, one tune, so reception's been really good, and um, uh, yeah, that's kind of where it's been. Now, there's so many elements, uh, like there's metal, there's rock, there's electronic, there's 80s, synthwave. How would you guys classify it? Can you put it into one genre or not really? No, you can't. So therefore, we created our own. It is called Power Wave. The same as our album title, because it is synth wave and power metal. And you can't just be like, so what do you sound like? Oh, we sound like a combination of synth wave and power metal. That's way too long winded. Power wave. I also think that because um, when I when I tell people synthwave power metal, I, I don't know if it quite does the, the our backgrounds of music really justice. Uh, there is obviously those two genres there. Uh, we're fans of both, uh, but I, I think there's more to it than that. Uh, I think aside from synthwave power metal, I know with what I, I bring to this project, uh, I try to bring some even some like '80s pop sensibilities. Uh, there's like even a little bit of Michael Jackson in some of the lines I do in the studio. Uh, I just try to get creative with the stuff he sends me because it's you know, it's creative stuff. Um, so it's it's definitely out there. Uh, I know Robbie's a, a big Fear Factory guy too. I'd say that's a pretty big influence of yours, right? Um, Fear Factory. Well, the band kind of started because of that. Um, I had this idea of what would it sound like because I rediscovered synthwave, having not known I'd been listening to it forever, and uh, just didn't know what it was called. And then I was like, one of my favorite band f bands, Fear Factory. They have their electronic stuff. I was like, well, what would it sound like if Fear Factory wrote a synthwave song? And that's how I fight time happen. And again. I can't sing for beans. This guy. And uh, there was only one person that I knew that could pull this off. And at the time, we were both doing the, the aesthetic and uh, in our separate thing. And that, that, I mean, that's how it happened. But uh, if, I, if, we had to dis if I had to personally describe what we sound like, it's the best of everything of the 80s punched in your ear hole. Yeah, I mean, yes, it looks like we like caught each other before we did these photo shoots together, but we really didn't. It's been a piece of cake with aesthetic, I gotta say that. Um, now, I know the debut album was just released, so tell us a little more about the record. Um, Power Wave was a two and a half year endeavor. Um, basically, the way we work is we split everything 50 50, and that, that's everything. I do the music, he does the vocals. We don't step on each other's toes. Um, you know, every once in a while, we'd be like, hey, we got to pinch a little something to make it shorter. But uh, it took about two and a half years because at first, it was really all based on, is this going to work? And I Fight Time did well, so we're like, all right, let's make an album. And uh, yeah, Power Wave's out, and it's a mix of everything. Everything 80s. 
like it's got power metal, it's got synth wave, it's got synth pop, it's got, you know, you can shake your booty to it, you can bash your head to it, like, I, I don't even know. Yeah, um, as he was saying, uh, I find time, uh, a lot of times when I'm given uh, songs that have a big metal influence at times in it, uh, usually I gotta kind of figure out what my parts are gonna be, like, I gotta kind of figure out what hooks are gonna be in there, but that tune, it like wrote itself, like, every piece of it was what it needed to be, um, I remember I was like driving, I do a lot of my writing in my head, I pay attention on the road when I'm doing this, but I do a lot of it when I'm driving. Uh, probably 90% of the stuff I do is when I'm driving. And so when I was working on I Fight Time, um, it uh, it just, uh, the melodies were instant. Like everything was really instant. It was a really well old machine. Uh, and so once we released it, we, yeah, we wanted to see how it would go. Um, and I was pretty happy that it went well. We, we did well doing that. And we were just, you know, uh, Rob here is in a lot of different projects. I'm a, I I get I keep busy too, and I think we just got so overwhelmed with everything else going on in our lives. We we kept putting Power Wave off on the back burner for I'd say maybe a few months, close to a year, and I think we made the decision uh, about I'd say four or five months ago that hey, you know he's got uh, Dark Rob's got the material. Uh, let's make a decision. You know we want to release this album. Like we want to get it done, and uh, that's when I think the bulk of the work was done outside of the first few tunes like we we really decided to get this finished uh we had a method you know we knew what worked to re in terms of recording uh you know we worked with tony corelli for tracking a lot of the vocals darren here uh we recorded our cover of burning in the third degree uh he did his he did a solo on call of cthulhu um tracked on that so you know after having that method yeah it was one of these days it was just kind of like yo we got it here people want to hear it uh let's get it done and that's where we are a few months after that Cool. Now, if people want to find you guys online, look you up, how do they find your music? Uh, Power Wave and Megatronics are available on all digital distribution uh, pages, iTunes, um, Google Play, Amazon, Spotify. Uh, if you want to support an artist, buy it from our Bandcamp, because that, that's where we, 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 make the, we make the donuts on Bandcamp. And the more donuts you give us, the more we can turn those donuts into physical merchandise if we don't eat all the donuts. Um, that would be uh, megatronics.bandcamp.com or on um, all the other digital music. You can just look up Megatronics Power Wave and you'll find the album. Um, Facebook is uh, Megatronics Official and uh, Instagram is at Megatronics Official. We post a lot on Instagram, so that would be the spot if you want to follow us for stuff. It's usually just us flexing and showing off these... Pit Viper sunglasses. Pit Viper sunglasses. What kind of sunglasses are you wearing? Pit Viper sunglasses. Yeah, guys, you want to pick up some Pit Viper sunglasses? They've been very I, good. I would like to pick up Pit Viper sunglasses. Where do I get them? Yes, uh, they've they've been very kind to both this project uh, and and Throw Color. Uh, they're amazing. Uh, that's how we got. These are the Miami Nights. Uh, and which ones are yours? These are the Purple Rains. But yes, that's how we do it. I, I got nothing else to input. He nailed it. And one last question. Uh, now that you got your debut album out, playing some shows, where do you plan on taking the band? Full U.S. tour? Or? Let's start with you, Robbie. I will uh, go with this band wherever they will pay us and let us sleep somewhere or buy the plane ticket and say, play. If, if, you, if, if you book us, we will be there. Pretty similar, yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd say Megatronics, uh, I have a lot of faith in the project. Um, Power Wave, uh, I feel, is a very unique release, uh, and I think Synthwave is, it's really, uh, the current, I guess the genre itself is really a few years old, at least the iteration we're familiar with, and like Carpenter Brute, um, Dance of the Dead, all those guys. So, as a result, you know, I, I kind of want to, I'm down to see this, the, ride this wave, for like, this yeah, really the pump. yeah, 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 uh, ride this as far as it goes, you know, uh, give it the maximum effort we can, and uh, I think... Having a show like tonight with a really receptive crowd and uh, getting the, re the reception we've had from Power Wave, I, I'm, you know, I think we're both pretty motivated to, to you know, keep kicking some butt. And uh, I, w I would like to give a special shout out to uh, one special person that drives this van and owns this van that we're sitting in doing this interview. And he goes to these uh, Megatronic shows to hang out and play one fucking song with us. And, really damn well. and he plays it very fucking well. He, he only has to get up for one song. That's how goddamn good he is. He's just like, fucking bam, and done, and like, I'm out. And, he, and it's Darren, uh, Darren Rochelle from uh, um, uh, Throw Killer. Hey there. 
So, Robbie is one of the only people that I know that likes Metallica as much as I do. Yeah, no kidding. We learned all that before, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, he sent he sent me a couple of the rough versions of the instrumentals uh, before. I mean, you, Power Rob probably heard them too, but he's like, hey, what do you think of this? I heard this one he sent me. It wasn't named Cthulhu, but I started listening to it. Like, wait a second. Is this Call of Cthulhu? Yeah, and you're playing the solo on it. So that, Okay, yeah, I can do that. So that's how that came to be. It's kind of the same thing with uh, Burning in the Third Degree. You sent me kind of a rough version of that. I thought, wait a second, I know what song this is. <laughs> and thankfully I got to record, I got to be the one to engineer that one because I love that song. Yeah, it's uh, Burning in the Third Degree. I think we should take a second to talk about the success of that song. Uh, it's It's been kind of defining this this band, and it was, uh, it, it was an interesting cover we just kind of randomly had. Uh, we're all a big fan of the song, uh, and uh, so far reception for that's been really good. And it is by a mile the biggest song people listen to of ours. And we've had some good play counts on our songs, but do we know the play count on Spotify right now for Burning? It's probably like forty-two thousand. Yeah, and growing. Uh, I've made jokes with my friends. It's definitely it's. I know vocally, it's it's definitely a it's a workout. Um, We've done covers and other projects and stuff before, and I always joke with my friends. I'm like, you know, how about the one that's the most frustrating to sing? Why is that gonna blow up? But <laughs> joking aside, uh, yeah, no, it, it, what a what a surprise. You know, it was a fun song. This guy, you know, Darren's a really talented dude. He's got a degree from Sheffield and recording uh, from the Recording Institute. Uh, one of the best musicians all around I've ever worked with, um, and just an all around know it all guy. You know, usually when there's a problem with everything from like insulation to car mechanic stuff to guitar parts. This dude's the first person we usually ask. And he, uh, he's very nice to let Megatronic stuff, everything that's Megatronics, into to the Thrill Killer van and drive and hang out with us. And I think as long as he gets to fucking shred and just have a beer, you're happy, right? Pretty much. <clears throat> and then they never let me win at Smash, and I'm going to fucking whoop his ass later. That is part of the deal. Let, let me play you in Smash Brothers and kick your ass, and I'll try <laughs> Yeah, we ain't gonna take a knee against you, man. Come on, man. It's 2020. You gotta, you gotta beat us on our sword, bro. <laughs> Here you go. Well, I was gonna say it was good talking with you guys, and uh, everyone looked them up. Thanks. Thank you for climbing in our van. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 